uh, do you do you see my uh, PowerPoint? Do you see my PowerPoint? Okay. Uh, okay, hello to everyone. Good morning to you all. Oh, sorry. Um, today I am going to talk about the conquest of Sicily in the context of jurisprudence. Since everybody knows me, I don't want to introduce myself. Uh, I have uh, divided my paper in four chapter. Chapter one is introduction, and chapter two is on the conquest of Sicily by Muslim. And chapter three, conquest of Sicily on the scales of jurisprudence or theories. And finally, conclusion. In introduction, I have to explain a little in general and have a, an overview on the subject. And also I will emphasize why I have chosen this subject. Strategic, uh, strategically, Sicily is an important island, and uh, it is the largest. It is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea, and it is located also on the uh, shipping routes of the west and east of the sea. Uh, Sicily is. Uh, separated from the mainland Italy by a narrow strait, and also it is uh, among the all the coastal area from the east to the west of the northern Africa. It is the, the closest uh, ports is, uh, are the ports in Tunisia to the uh, Sicilia. So Sicily is an important place because it is located on the route line and also it is very close to the uh, mainland Italy and also close to the central uh, Mediterranean Sea and also the central North Africa. So strategically it is very important for the uh, all countries and especially the superpowers or regional powers at that time, Byzantine and Muslims. So uh, Sicily, sorry, Sicily was uh, ruled by a Roman Empire, Byzantine, for three centuries before it has been conquered by Muslim in 827. So uh, it has a long history to be ruled under the Byzantine before um, Muslim uh, conquerors. So Compared to other Muslim conquests in the Africa and in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, the conquest of Sicily is really outstanding, outstanding from two, uh, especially two points. One is the participation of Elpidius, uh, the former Navy commander and also the leader of independent Sicily alongside Muslims in the operation to regain his power in Sicily. So his participation is really unique among all the conquests of Muslims because he was non-Muslim and he participated. And especially he also participated against his own country, his own island. So from this point of view, it is a unique. And from other point of view, 
the role of uh, very well known uh, a very well known jurist Ibn Furat, the role of the Ibn Furat as a jurist and prominent jurist in the North Africa and also in Andalusia. His role was really unique and he took, not only he took part, he, he participated in the uh, battle and the, in the operations, but he also issued a fatwa on jihad against Sicily to conquer Sicily. So it was from this point of view also, if he were, it is a, a unique conquest and especially uh, he is also 70, uh, he participated in this uh, operation when he was 72 years old. So the, when I was studying uh, the history of uh, Sicily, it was interesting for me that uh, the role of the Fari and jurist and uh, his role as a commander, his role as a jurist to issue the fatwa and mobilize people. So it was very interesting issue to uh, study this uh, subject. So I tried to uh, concentrate on this subject and evaluate the, he, the, the fatwa that he issued in this regard. Uh, as we know, the, uh, when, especially at that time, even today is also the jurists when they issue fatwa, they can mobilize people against any other forces. So it will be very effective and it, the result will be very important. So it was very interesting for me to, uh, to evaluate his fatwa and his participation as a commander. Now I am moving to the Second chapter, the conquest of Sicily by Muslim at the Galans. In fact, uh, maybe uh, some people, some, t uh, some think that why I am going to talk about the uh, history, but anyhow, uh, it is a prerequisite for my discussion because uh, first of all, I have to explain the uh, situation at that time and then come to evaluate the FATFA which is issued on this regard. So uh, because of that, it is necessary for me to uh, have a, a look at the, the history of the conquest. From the reign of the third caliph, Uthman, yet that means the time that Muslim were very active at sea at that time in the, at the Mediterranean Sea. From that time to the reign of Bani Umayyah also and Bani Abbas, uh, so Abbasid period. During this period, uh, Muslims and Romans repeatedly have fought against each other at sea on the coastal areas, whether on, whether in Sicily or Africa, and even in North Africa, they have fought with each other a lot. So, uh, in fact, uh, fighting between Muslims and also Roman Empire, it was uh, the continuation of the war between the uh, ancient powers, that means the Roman and Persia. So it was uh, some type of uh, inheriting the war from the past. So it was not only the uh, war between two uh, important uh, emperor at that time, even during the uh, ancient time, there was a f uh, continuously these two emperor, that means Persian Empire and also Roman Empire, they used to fight with each other. So it was a kind of uh, inheriting the war from the past, and it was a continuously fighting. That was 700 years of fighting between Persian Empire and Roman Empire, and now uh, after Islam also, this uh, fighting is continued, this war were continuing for another 
hundred years till up to Abani Omayyad time and the uh, advent of uh, Abbasid uh, dynasty. So in 823, following the political and social dispute in Sicily, Elphidius, the navy commander of Sicily, revolted against the against governor, the governor of Sicily, and declared his independence. In fact, he has killed uh, governor, the governor of uh, Sicily. I don't want to talk about the uh, reason why he this dispute appeared because some people says uh, it was uh, just like a, a marriage uh, problems and uh, maybe family problems or uh, sometimes some people says because of his some of his operations in the in uh, in the region so because of that maybe there was a dispute between them however in general there was the there were some political and social dispute between this commander and the governor and also with byzantine so because of that uh, problems uh, elpidius uh, took power and killed the governor of Sicily. And uh, when he uh, took the power, he declared independent uh, Sicily. So for the first time, after long history, he uh, declared independent of the Sicily. So when he killed the governor and announced that uh, Sicily is independent country, then uh, Byzantine was uh, obviously uh, not happy and he was, they were angry, so they were uh, trying to get the revenge. So in 825, uh, the, the opponent of the uh, Elpidius and Byzantine forces together were able to defeat the uh, Elpidius uh, and, uh, and during this time, Elpidius uh, took refuge in North Africa and asked Ziyadatullah, the governor of Tunisia, to support him to regain his power in uh, Sicily. So, uh, in fact, when we compare these two dates, that means uh, when he has revolted, that means the Elpidius has revolted in 80. Uh, in 823 and 825, it seems that quite more than one year, he was a leader of the independent Sicily. So during that time, he was ruling under the uh, condition that two superpowers were observing the situation. That means the Roman and Byzantine, Byzantine uh, Empire, and also from the other side, Ziyadatullah and North African uh, Empire. So they were just looking at the condition, like today's condition when, when I want to just compare. It was two block at that time uh, who compete with each other. So the Sicilian government cannot uh, be independent uh, completely. Uh, between the line of the history, I can feel that maybe after he uh, declared independence from the Byzantine, maybe he had some type of talk with the Ziyadatullah to support him because he, when he declared the uh, independence and he killed the governor who was appointed by the Byzantine. So, he could not uh, just continue like that as a, as a small and little uh, independent uh, island in the sea. So, and especially the Sicily was very important, uh, uh, located in very important uh, place. So uh, because of this, I think uh, uh, when, he f uh, when he defeated from his uh, opponent and also by the help of the Byzantine, he fled to the North Africa. It was, it, it was not without any reason. I, I think for I can read uh, in between the lines of the history 
that uh, that there were some uh, talks and some negotiation during this period of more than one year. Maybe there was some discussion also with Ziyadatullah and North Africa. So finally, when uh, he defeated from the Byzantine forces, he fled to uh, North Africa and asked uh, refugee and also asked them to help uh, to regain his power in Sicily. And uh, when I was studying the history, I saw that uh, from the, uh, in fact, the, when there was a fight between Elpidus and also Byzantine forces, maybe at that time there were some conflict also at the sea and some Muslim sailors and maybe the uh, traders has been captured and captivated by the Byzantine forces. So this was also another issue um, uh, other than the tension that was uh, at that time between the Ziyadatullah in North Africa and Byzantine. This was also another issue. So when uh, this gover uh, this, gover uh, this uh, leader, that means Elpidus, uh, the, the commander and his forces, took refuge in North Africa. When he was there, uh, he also tried to get his support and asked them to, uh, to take any mili some military action to uh, bring him in power again. And he promised that if he come to the power, he will pay tribute and also it will pay jizya, uh, a special tax to the so I, since I don't have much time, I am going to uh, uh, go a little faster. So now I am going to uh, talk about the uh, uh, how, and especially I have to tell you also that there was a 10 year treaty between, uh, between Sicily and also Ziyadatullah, that means the Tunis, Tunisian for about 20 years, they had a peace treaty. But this treaty also was a still valid, but uh, during these circumstances, uh, the fatwa of jihad and operation came, and it was not uh, allowed in Islam and also at the, at the international level also it is not allowed because the, when they had a valid uh, treaty, but however, uh, this is also important issue to see how the Ziyadatullah and also the uh, jurist uh, Ibn Furad, why he issued fatwa against uh, Sicily, though they had the uh, though they had the agreement and treaty. So based on this, now since I don't have much time, I have to say that we have to solve this problem and I give an answer from the jurisprudential point of view. We have two theories, one defensive jihad and one offensive jihad. So in offensive jihad, that means some extremist jurists, they believe that Muslim ruler always have a right to attack, non attack others and disbelievers at any time, and especially because uh, there was a dispute, then uh, it is justifiable to attack any uh, other forces and disbelievers. And to put uh, three condition, either, uh, either to convert to Islam and like other Muslim enjoy equal rights and duties, or surrender to the Muslim rulers and pay tribute and jizya, or to fight, and let war determine destiny of both uh, any other uh, both side. So, this is one uh, theory that is a def uh, offensive jihad. So maybe uh, uh, he believed that means the uh, Zia, uh, Ibn Furat believed that he has a right to issue jihad. That means offensive jihad, or maybe he has a right to. Uh, issue the jihad on the theory of the defensive jihad, but uh, he had. We have two problem here. One is uh, defensive jihad. Since there was a treaty between them, 
this treaty was uh, was valid and also second things is that when you defend when your forces on are on the sicily you cannot say it is a defensive you have occupied the other land it is the offensive so how we can uh, solve these problems in fact when if we want to solve this problem as a defensive jihad and explain uh, I have come to this conclusion that he may come to this conclusion from these two, two, these two theories, he come to this conclusion. That uh, when I have studied the history and jurisprudence, uh, I saw that the tension uh, has uh, really high in the region. Uh, and uh, some Muslim also sailor like told you that they have captivated. So because of that, maybe they thought that uh, uh, they have right to uh, to defend their uh, their 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 citizens uh, also, and especially the uh, commander, the Elvidis also took refuge there. So it was also another problem that. Uh, that Sicily and also uh, Roman Empire and the Byzantine Empire was uh, so angry. And so the tension in this region was uh, very high at that time. So within this period, maybe Ziyadatullah and uh, people like uh, Ibn Furad and the politician thought that maybe, uh, maybe the uh, Byzantine is in the position to attack uh, Tunisia because uh, the commander was there, that was the leader of independent, uh, independent uh, Sicily war there with, this, with his groups. And also uh, this was a sensitive since he was claiming that he's a leader of independent country. So because of that, the situation was really uh, tough and maybe Ziyadatullah and also Ibn Furah thought that uh, Byzantine and Sicilian are the, in the position to uh, attack Tunisia. In this position, in this situation, maybe we can say that uh, uh, Ibn Furah thought that on the basis of preemptive, uh, preemptive uh, action or self-defense, maybe he has issued this fatwa. So based on that, uh, we can justify that he may thought that it is a defensive uh, jihad and he issued the, his fatwa. And uh, I don't think that he was thinking that it is an offensive jihad because normally in Hanafi school, they are more moderate in this regard. Thank you so much.